Hi there, and welcome to a very special edition of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am here with AJ, creator and founder of the Araba Joy website at arabajoy.com. So uh, AJ, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for the invite, Jamie. Yeah, I know we have several listeners that are familiar with you and um, would love to hear more about um, what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking today specifically about praying the promises of God, which I think is near and dear to AJ's heart and something that I know a lot of us just really would like to hear more about and talk about. But before we get into the details, um, well, I'll give you a little bit of background. So AJ is, like I said, she's the founder of ArabaJoy.com. That's A-R-A-B-A-H, which is an amazing website. I really would love, if you have not checked it out, you need to go there. She has so many amazing resources to encourage you in your biblical study and prayer life and you're just your walk with God. Um, She was a missionary with her family for 14 years in East Asia and she has a passion to make Jesus known and help others bask in his glory. I just love that mission statement. Um, But before we get into the promises of God, I just am really curious to know how you got into this online coaching or, you know, just basically mentoring, did this start on the mission field? Yes, actually it did. So it's kind of funny because it was accidental. I really just needed an outlet. So I had like three kids in diapers and a five-year-old and we were pretty much, I was pretty much stuck at home with the little guys all day long. Uh, We had limited transportation and I needed like some adult conversation. (laughs) And so I just started the blog as an outlet for me and really as an altar of worship to the Lord and a way for me to express what the Lord was doing in my own life, things I was learning, what I was experiencing on the mission field. And it was my sacred place. You know, it was a place that I went to just for me and the Lord. And over time, people started asking me, well, what do you do to grow closer to the Lord? Or how do you study your Bible more in depth? And so I just began answering those questions and it, that continued to grow. And I began to put these resources together into printables or books and that sort of thing. And it just kind of grew from there. So I, it's been an absolute honor to mentor in an online environment. You know, I've done in real life and online and I love them both. They're both unique and very, very special. I think that's, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because I know sometimes I just curse technology and I think, oh, I just, I wish it hadn't even come about. And then you have these opportunities to reach so many people and, you know, for you and I to be able to have this conversation and for other people to get to know you and and the things you're doing and and to be able to connect. God can just really, if you focus on technology in the right way, it can be just a huge, you know, furthering of the gospel and and just a blessing. So that's exciting. That's really neat. Um, So your, your Bible or your, um, your website just has, it's amazing. I love your website. I love all of the resources. Um, They kind of span from Bible study, prayer, practical tools. Um, I just, I love it. And today though, we're going to be focusing in on a kind of a small um, part of that, which is praying the promises of God. So I just thought maybe you could tell us a little bit about how praying the promises of God has been important in your own life. Absolutely. I love talking about this. (laughs) So I really, what I call my signature sin is really struggling with doubt and distrust. So I have a hard time trusting God. I have a hard time believing that he really loves me or that what I'm doing is really significant. Will it really make an impact? I just have always struggled with doubt. And I, it's been a matter of prayer my whole life. And one day I was reading in the scripture about his promises being yes. So this, the reference is 2 Corinthians one twenty. I think it's a really important scripture for everybody listening to go look up on their own. But he says, all the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. But then the second part of that verse says, by which we give our amen. And so when I read that 
on this particular occasion, the Lord just really seemed to ask me, you know, my promises are yes, but are you giving amen to those promises? And for the first time I realized I had a responsibility to give verbal affirmation, which is what the word amen means, give verbal affirmation to God's yes and God's promises over my life. And honestly, I had never really done that. I had said, okay, I know this, God, but I wasn't really saying, okay, God, I am affirming that this is true. I am believing this. I am going to verbally take a step of faith here into this promise. And I'd never really, that's, that hadn't been my practice. And so I decided I'd try it. I said, okay, I'm going to try to do this every day for the next few weeks. And I'm just going to take one promise a day and I'm going to give verbal affirmation to it and see what happens. And over those 40 days, you know, it wasn't like some miracle happened or I had like a big aha moment, but slowly over those 40 days, I noticed that I was gaining more confidence. I wasn't struggling with doubt in the same ways that I had before. I was understanding God's love for me and how he had chosen me and how his call on me didn't really rely so much on me and my abilities because, you know, those are so limited, but it relied on his character and his nature and his ability to support and uphold me. And so I was hooked. I mean, it was, it was a life changing experience where I started and haven't stopped. Um, and I could talk a lot about the promises that have really made a difference to me, but I, I just, you know, it just starts with, with, with one. So if you had to pick one, what would the one, what is the one that you would share? Actually pick, pick two or three. Okay. Okay. So I, I do have a ground zero. I call it my ground zero. I go back to when I don't know what else to pray or else to start. And that is Hebrews um, 11, 6. And that verse talks about God being a rewarder of those who seek him. And that's my go-to promise because so many times I feel inadequate or I feel like I've blown it or I feel some distance between me and the Lord and I'm not sure like how to fix it. And that verse tells me that I don't have to be super spiritual. I don't have to have it all figured out or have everything put together. I just need to seek him. And as long as I can do that, and honestly, that's just saying, Lord, I need you, right? I mean, it's simple. As long as I can do that, he is the rewarder of that. He starts to step in. He meets me right where I'm at. And so that is my number one. I would say that's my ground zero, my go-to promise of all time, biggest one of all time. I love that. And what a, you know, I mean, who hasn't been there where you just, you have nothing else to stand on. And so you do, you get back to that. Hey, there's nothing in me. I need you, <laughs> but yeah. I love that. And so before you get into a couple of your other favorite ones though, I'm curious, how do you, um, what is your process for verbally affirming those promises? Is it reading the scripture or is it echoing it back to God with your own take on it? Or how do you do that? Yeah. That's a really good question. So I basically have a four-step process that I use. It, it just kind of makes sense to me to do it this way. So I'll start by reading the promise. And a lot of times it helps to read in more than one translation because scriptures are worded differently. And it just gives you a more robust understanding if you can see it stated in a couple different ways. So I'll read the scripture in a couple different translations. Then I just write it out because there's a pro there's something that happens in our brain when we take the time to write. And yeah. there's that motor memory involved and all of that. So it's just it it forces us to slow down and comprehend what we are actually reading. And sometimes when I do this step, I will put it into my own words too. So if there's like a strangely worded promise from the Lord, I'll just kind of summarize it or I will put it into words that make sense to me or that are meaningful to me. And then the third step is I take a little bit of time to ponder it or to meditate on it. And I think this is critical because, you know, we can rush through life. Life happens so fast 
And unless we take the time to really let our minds be saturated with the word of the Lord, we're not really getting the meat out of it that we could. So I meditate on it. I'll, I, I try to find a key word in the verse, and then I'll just kind of roll that around in my mind. So what are the synonyms? What are the antonyms? What are the pros and the cons, the benefits of it, the causes, but all that sort of thing. And just let my mind expand with the meaning of that promise. And then I just pray it back to the Lord. So the fourth step is praying it back to him and saying, Lord, this is what you have said. This is what you have promised to me. This is what you've promised about who you are. And I am verbally saying, I believe this. I'm taking this and shaping my life around the truth of this promise. So the four steps again are reading it, writing it, pondering, and praying. That's awesome. I love that. And, you know, as you do that, then, you know, your life kind of becomes the amen to that. You know, you can walk in that just empowered by, by the promises of God. So yeah. do you... I, I cut you short with a couple of others. Do you have a couple of others that you love in particular or do you like? Well, to okay. So when people ask me, where do you start? Because the Bible is a big book, as we all know. Yeah. And there are a lot of promises in the Bible. I really recommend starting with the promises of Jesus. So like the promises of who he is, some of his names, what he has done on the cross, words even like justification. Um, adoption, those sorts of things. And for those who are watching this on video, I know the, the listeners, the audio listeners can't see this, but I have a book that I compiled some of my favorites. It's called Praying the Promises of the Cross. And this contains 40 of those promises that center around Jesus Christ. And, you know, I, I want to mention this as well, because sometimes people say, this is a promise from the Old Testament. Does it apply to me? And there's a lot of context that you need to consider when you're looking at promises. But the promises of the cross apply to all of us. So we don't have to decide, is this for me or not? Because if we're in Christ Jesus, those promises are for us. So if you're in doubt or if you need a starting place, Look at the promises of the person of Christ and what he has done for you on the cross. There are just hundreds in the scripture and you will, I mean, it'll bless your socks off. That was actually one of my questions that I was going to ask you because I have heard many people say, be careful. And, you know, Alana and I have said before, you know, be careful that you know the context of what you're claiming because you could take an obscure passage of scripture um, but that is, that's such a great starting place. I actually recently signed up for your, um, like just today, I signed up for your um, praying the names of Jesus or meditate oh. how the names of Jesus. Yes. Is it praying the names of Jesus? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I haven't started receiving those yet, but I, I plan to do that because I thought that was really neat to just, especially in the Christmas and post-Christmas season, you know, it's because that's when we're recording is before Christmas, that it would be really neat to just meditate on the names of Jesus or the names of God. You know, in the Old Testament, there are all kinds of names of God. So that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Yes. So what advice would you give for someone that doesn't know how to know whether a promise applies to them? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, context is probably the biggest thing. I would say you really need to understand the book of the Bible that it's in, who that promise was written to is, is also very key. Um, you need to see if there was an if, then, if it's a conditional mm -hmm. promise or an unconditional promise. So there are, there are key things to look for in that. But I will also say, so I was thinking about this actually today. So there's a promise that a lot of people claim from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. which is um, called to me. No, it's not the call to me. It is, um, I have given you a future and a hope. I know the plans I have for you. Okay, it's coming back to me now. I, yes. for, I know the plans I have to you to give you a future and a hope. And some people throw that verse around everywhere. They put it on their house walls, you know, and then other people say that's totally taken out of context because it was given to the Israelites as they were in um, 
Babylonian, under Babylonian rule. And in the immediate context, it doesn't apply to people outside of Israel. However, and so that's a very important to know. It's important to know the context and who this promise was given to. Mm -hmm. However, as you study scripture, we know from Romans 8 that God's plans for us are for good. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his purposes. And so we know that as Christians, he's working everything in our lives for good. So he does have a good plan for us. We know that we have a hope in Christ Jesus. And we know that God never changes. He's the same. He's the same God today as he was back then. And so we can kind of make some promise. We can claim a part of that promise for our lives today. So there's a, there's a lot involved in going into the scripture to look for promises. I, there's certainly a word of caution to be had here, but there's also, I think we can go too far with it too. Mm -hmm. We need to always consider the character of God. And I think that's really what the promises come down to. It comes down to God's character and his unchanging nature. And that is at the core of our reliance and dependency upon him. Yeah, that's, that's very, very well said. And, you know, I, there have been times when I have read things that I know don't apply to me. But I have just felt God saying, this is for you. And, you know, so you do need to use discernment and just take it with a grain of salt. If you do have a promise that you feel God is giving you to, to think, you know, I feel like this is for me. And if it comes to pass, God gets the glory. And if it doesn't, you can think, well, maybe I misheard. But, but to go into it with freedom of, of allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you through God's word. But like you said, with caution and just wanting to treat the word of God with the care and, and the, you know, the time that it takes to, to check into that. But that is exciting. But I love your 40 days. Tell us again, show us the book one more time so we can see the, um, praying the promises. It's a 40 day prayer journal, praying the promises of the cross, because all of those promises are ours, you know, through the blood of Jesus. I, I think that's a great place to start. Yes, absolutely. It's wonderful. Well, before we let you go, um, I have to ask you, because I know that you were in Alaska recently, and for those of you that don't know, Alana and I are both from Alaska, and so AJ got to go to Alaska recently to Harvester Island, um, which is just off of Kodiak, right, with Leslie Leland Fields, who's a fellow Alaskan Christian author, and Ann Voskamp was there. I mean, what a, what a, what was that like, you know, to be there with those two women and just a, a small group of Christian authors or bloggers and just people looking to grow in their Christian life and writing. What was that like? Oh my goodness. Okay. It was amazing in a word. It was amazing. And honestly, the only way I could describe it was it was the trip of a lifetime. It was an adventure. It was full of great community teaching, fellowship, and of course, the beauty of Alaska. It was just incredible. It's something I, I'm taking with me definitely for the rest of my life. That's amazing. That is just, that's really neat. I'm glad you got to do that. And um, I'm just excited to see, you know, just now that uh, I've, I kind of knew about you and then I've kind of learned more about you and just kind of um, investigating some of your really great resources and um, wanting to have you on the show, but um, how can we be praying for you? How is God moving in your ministry and in your life? And how can we and our listeners be praying for you? Thank you for asking that, Jamie. That really means a lot because my husband particularly is really looking for a place of ministry. You know, we served overseas as missionaries for 14 years and we're in the States now. And our hearts are really to go back overseas, but the Lord has just said, not right now. Mm -hmm. And we're both struggling with that a little bit, but my husband is just, he's teaching at a Christian school, but his heart is to do more ministry. And um, that would be a prayer request that the Lord would just open the right door and would help us to be patient as we wait on him to open that door. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm going to close with prayer for you and just for your husband and your family. But before we do that, can you let us know again where our listeners can find you and anything else you want to share? 
Absolutely. Yes. So they can go to arabajoy.com. And if they will go to, if they'll type in arabajoy.com slash promises, they can sign up for the 40 day promise challenge. It's a free challenge. They'll get 40 promises that I love to pray. It's a great place for them to start if they would like to get started on praying the promises. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. And before I let you go, I do want to say a prayer for you. God, we just thank you so much for giving us this time together and just for bringing AJ here to the podcast and um, just sharing about praying the promises that you have given us as believers, God, and just allowing us to claim them and just place our amen on them and just walk them out in our lives so that we can live fuller, just more abundant lives as Christians. Lord, I just lift her up to you now. We just lift up her ministry, her writing, her website, her mentoring, all of her things surrounding her ministry. Um, we just pray that you would expand her audience, that you would expand her reach, and that you would just continue to pour into her, God, just the streams of living water, just to keep her vision and her writing and everything that she does fresh and, and coming directly from you, from your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just pray for wisdom, for just. Um, for you to give her the priorities that you have for her, just the things that she's going to do next, be a light to her feet and a lamp to her path as she walks this journey of, of faith and of ministering. And um, we lift up her family, God. We just we lift up her role as wife and as a mom. Um, we pray that you would equip her to be balanced and just to do exactly every single thing that she wants and needs and is called to do by you, God. And we do pray for her husband, Father. We just pray that you would give him, um, we know your timing is perfect, and we just pray you would give him what he needs and um, just the next steps of ministry for him, God, where his heart is just longing to minister. We pray you would fill that in him, God, that you would give him um, just an outlet for that, whether it's going overseas or contentment being exactly where he is or something more where, they're, where they are right now. We know that you will provide, God, and we just we claim that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who provides every need, and we just pray that for him right now, God, and we pray for their entire family, for their children, for their home, that you would just set them apart as holy and, and pleasing to yourself, God, and that you would anoint them with your blessing and your mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you again for being with us. And we just, um, I hope we get to talk to you again someday and maybe have you back on the podcast. But for now, um, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.